Hello, good morning everybody. Today we'd like to present our discussion about multimodal discourse analysis. Our members are Inaya, Isfatima, Hani, and Farisa. Before we start our discussion today, let's see the table of contents. The first one is introduction, the second one is approaches to MTA, the third one is theoretical and analytical issues in MTA, the fourth one is sample MTA text analysis, it includes the some examples of MTA, and then the last one is new directions in MTA, and also the limitation of MTA. The Introduction of Multimodal Analysis Multimodal discourse analysis is an emerging paradigm in discourse studies that looks at multiple modes of communication such as text, color, and images. It is a method of discursive analysis that looks at not just how individual modes communicate, but how they interact with one another to create semiotic meaning. For example, language and other resources which integrate to create meaning in multimodal or multi-semiotic phenomena, for example, print materials, videos, websites, three-dimensional objects and day-to-day -day events, are variously called semiotic resources moods and modalities. Multimodal analysis itself is referred to as multimodality, multimodal analysis, multimodal semiotics, and multimodal studies. Following Halliday, semiotic resources are systems of meanings that constitute the reality of the culture. The medium is the means through which the multimodal phenomena materialize. For example, newspaper, television, computer, or material object and event. Approaches to multimodal analysis. Halliday concerned with both text and context. Crest and Van Leeuwen adopt a top-down contextual approach with a particular orientation to ideology. Thule develops a bottom-up grammatical approach by working closely with specific texts, for example, paintings, architectural designs, and sculptures, to derive frameworks which can be applied to other works. provide complementary perspectives being derived from Michael Halliday, social semiotic approaches to text, society, and culture, which ground social critic and concrete social practices through three fundamental principles. The first is three stratal conceptualization of meaning, which relates low-level features in the text, for example, images and sound. The second is metafunctional theory which models the meaning potential of semiotic resources into three distinct metafunctions. Ideational meaning, for example, our ideas about the words involves experiential meaning, representation and portrayal of experience in the word, and logical meaning as the construction of logical relations in the world. Interpersonal meaning as enactment of social relations and textual meaning as organization of the meaning as coherent text and units. The third is about instantian models with intermediate sub-potential registers appearing as patterns of choice in a text type for example, casual conversation, debate.
the development of theories and practices specific to multimodal analysis, on the other hand, will potentially contribute to other fields of study, including, importantly, linguistics. In this sense, multimodal analysis use texts or types of texts to explore, illustrate, problematize, or apply general issues in multimodal studies, such as those arising from the development of theoretical frameworks specific to the study of multimodal phenomena or methodological issues. This chapter deals with multimodal analysis precisely in this way, as a new field of study which requires specific theoretical and methodological frameworks and tools which in turn may be applied across other disciplines and domains. To make it clear, we put an example for multimodal analysis in advertising. Advertising is a means of communication with the users of a product or service. Most studies on multimodal analysis mainly focus on the visual images guided by visual grammar, without sufficient attention to verbal facts and sound in multimodal discourse. To comprehensively understand multimodal analysis, especially TV advertisement, it is worthwhile to conduct an integrated analysis of various modalities by combining the existing analysis methods. Therefore, the focus would be equally put on verbal, visual, and audio analysis of TV advertisement as much as possible, hoping to present a comprehensive understanding of the advertisement. Theoretical and analytical issues in multimodal discourse analysis. The theoretical and analytical issues in multimodal discourse analysis include three things. The first one is modeling semiotic resources, which are fundamentally different to language. Based on Halliday, language can be modeled as sets of interrelated systems in the form of system networks. The grammatical systems of language link word to meaning on the semantic level. On the other hand, according to Gestalt laws of organization, images are perceived as organized pattern in relation to the whole. So, image is made up by interrelated patterns forming one complete shape which in some way very similar to grammar, to the way language works. Therefore, like language, images have grammar structures that can be analyzed for meaning. However, most semiotic resources are fundamentally different to language. To differ language from image, based on Charles Sanders' theory of categorization of sign, language is a symbolic sign system which has no relationship to what is being represented. While images are iconic because they represent something through similarity. Therefore, analytic approach and frameworks based on linguistic models have been questioned because, as what have been mentioned, it has no relationship with the thing being represented. However, OTO 2010 model, which is adapted from linguistics, has been widely applied to mathematical and scientific images cities, buildings, museum, and displayed arts. The theoretical basis of O'Toole's model is Gestalt theory, where images are composed of interrelated parts in the composition of the whole. In this theory, he draws visual overlays of systematic choice on the image, suggesting a visually defined grammar as a possible way forward. Gestalt theory provides the basic for other approaches to visual perception involving geometrical structures, for example points, lines, planes, and shapes, and pattern recognition, and visual semantic algebras. So, the principle of Gestalt theory arises originally from psychology. It describes the way humans see objects by grouping similar elements, recognizing patterns, and simplifying complex images. Another theory is by Van Leeuwen, 1999 and 2009, 
which proposes modeling system uh, within multimodal semiotic resources. For example, color, font style and font size for typography and volume, voice quality and pitch. The next issue is modeling and analyzing intersemiotic expansions of meaning as semiotic choices in the grid in multimodal phenomena. The interaction of semiotic choices in multimodal phenomena gives rise to semantic expansions as the meaning potential of different resources are accessed and integrated. For example, in text-image relations and language, image and mathematical symbolism. In other words, the combination of various semiotic modes and resources produces expansion of meaning. This, sem uh, this semiotic expansion is also related to the materiality of the multimodal artifact, including the technology or other medium involved, for example, book or interact interactive digital media. Digital media allow the combination of different semiotic modes more than just text and image as in book. It can combine text, image, speech, and etc. all at once. Semantic integration in multimodal phenomena may be viewed metafunctionally, whereby experiential, logical, interpersonal, and textual meaning interact across elements at different ranks, um, for example, word group and image. The resulting multiplication of meaning, according to Lemke 1998, leads to a complex multidimensional semantic space where there may be a compression of meaning and divergent, even conflicting meanings. Therefore, there is no reason to assume a coherent semantic integration of semiotic choices in multimodal phenomena because of those possibilities. The processes and mechanisms of semantic expansion arising from intersemiosis have yet to be fully theorized. It may be that intersemiotic systems beyond the sets of interrelated grammatical systems for each resource operating as metagrammars are required. These intersemiotic systems would have the potential to link choices across the hierarchical taxonomies for each resource so that a word group in language, for example, is resemioticized as a component of a complex visual narrative, or vice versa. One major problem for multimodal discourse analysis is the complexity of both the intersemiotic processes and the resulting semantic space, particularly in dynamic text, for example, videos, and hypertext with hyperlinks, for example, internet. The last issue is modeling and analyzing resemioticization of multimodal phenomena as social practices unfold. Multimodal discourse analysis is also concerned with the resemioticization of multimodal phenomena across place and time. Resemioticization is about how meaning making shifts from context to context, for, from practice to practice, or from stage of practice to the next. Idema 2003 is concerned with the resemiotization as a dynamic process which underscores the material and historicized dimension of representation. Resemiotization takes place within the unfolding multimodal discourse itself as the discourse shift between different resources and across different contexts as social practices unfold. From a grammatical perspective, Resemiotization necessarily involves a reconstruction of meaning as semiotic choices change over place and time. In many cases, resemiotization involves introducing new semiotic resources and may result in metaphorical expansions of meaning as functional elements in one semiotic resource are realized using another semiotic resource. For example, the shift from language to image and mathematical symbolism in unfolding mathematics discourse. This process takes place as linguistic configurations involving participants, processes, and circumstances, for example, are visualized as entities. Resemiotization necessarily results in a semantic shift, as choices from different semiotic resources are not commensurate. 
processes specific to multimodal discourse analysis, such as intersemiosis and resemioticization of multimodal phenomena, add to the complexity of the semantic space which must be modeled and analyzed. Indeed, managing this complexity lies at the heart of multimodal discourse analysis. Sample MDA text analysis Concepts specific to MDA, namely semiotic resource, intersemiosis, and resemiosization, are illustrated through the analysis of an extract from a television multi-party debate, episode 2 of the Australian Broadcasting Commission's or ABC television show, with the title, Question and Answer of the Adventures in Democracy. It broadcasts on Thursday, 29. May 2008. The moderator is senior journalist Tony Jones, and the panel consists of Tanya Pilbersek as the Minister for Housing and the Status of Women in Kevin Roos' Federal Labour Government, Tony Abbott, the Opposition Liberal Party front pincer, now leader of the opposition in the Australian House of Representatives, and Bob Brown, leader of the Australian Green Party. The extract is concerned with the interactions between Tony Jones, Tanya Pilbersek, and Tony Abbott about leaked cabinet documents re regarding a government cabinet decision in favor of a full watch seem to combat rising petrol prices and reservations about this seem as revealed through the leaked documents. This is the transcript of the television multi-party debate that is explained above. You can read the dialogue by yourself. If you conduct the multimodal analysis, it also includes the interactions between the spoken language, kinetic features, including case, body posture and gesture, and cinematography effects, including camera angle and frame size. This is a table of cinematography analysis. It includes camera angle, camera movement, and visual frame. You can read it by yourself. It is the common knowledge for cinematographer. We we'll just use it if we analyze the video or picture. We will show you the example of it at almost in the end of this presentation at Michelle Obama picture. The multimodal analysis of the extract with key salient frames are presented in this table. The following analysis reveals how the multimodal choices Tony Abbott makes, particularly with respect to linguistic choices, intonation, gesture, and body posture, work closely together to reorient the discussion about the leaked documents from being a legal issue to a political issue in order to criticize and undermine Kevin Roots, or the former of the Australian Prime Minister. We will jump to the study about model of sound from the sample. Uh, let's pay attention to the one Tony Jones utter a proposition that's far enough, followed with a question tag, isn't it? So it goes like, that's far enough, isn't it? The proposition above explicitly signals that Tony Jones expect a particular kind of response, which we will study after this. Uh, the utterance by Tony Jones is said with respect to Tanya Pelsberg's defense of her government handling of the leaked documents. As we know, the reservation for isn't it can be no it is not or yes it is. However, uh, the reply by Tony Abbott adds reservation to the proposition isn't it? Uh, uh, saying yes, it is, which indicates agreement reservation. This reply also indicates an interpersonally focused reply, but in the sense of having the information focused on the finite is means that about is agree that the proposition is true, and it indicates that there is no additional meaning on it in terms of content. It implies that he did not intend to talk more about the previous discourse, which is a legal discourse. Tony Abbott does concede the proposition via polarity, saying yes, it is. It enacts reservation uh, via polarized intonation with respect to another field of discourse, which is politics. 
Uttering this fault by conjunction but indicates that for him the legal issue is not what is at stake here. Rather, there is a shift to the leaking of the documents as a political issue, resulting in a new sub-base in the leaked cabinet document base. Therefore, he moves the discourse from legal discourse to politic discourse, and then proceeds to elaborate on his point. He only agreed to the propositions by saying yes, it is, but and then continue with the conjunction, conjunction but uh, to start elaborating on another point that he thinks uh, the discussion should be about. The shifting of discourse is the typical characteristic of political discourse, just like what is performed by Tony Abbott from where he moved from legal discourse to political discourse. It is well known as politician not answering the question. From what he said, Tony Abbott managed to effectively employ a range of multimodal research which function to change the field of discourse. This research include using the conjunction but, using the reserved key realized to falling rising intonation. This is the moment he say yes it is, which contain falling rising tone 4. You can see back in figure 8.2 and then he gestured his hand to form a white on movement which then become the preparation for a series of gesture strokes to emphasize his point you can see he raised one of his hand which uh, its palm facing forward this is the point where he says but and then he forms body posture by sitting back and then leaning forward as he makes his point about the new government leaking. You can see the body posture in pictures number 4 here. And then he also employs a multimodal research by performing interpersonal dishes as he refer Tony Jones as Tony uh, in acting solidarity. Following this, Tony Abbott continues speaking as he sits back and then engages successfully with the, audi with the studio audience through gaze and angled body posture while expanding his hand gesture. He also briefly but directly engages with, with the viewer with a straight body posture. You can see the picture below. With his both hand raised and then palms facing outwards to further engage the viewer. And then pay attention to the next picture. He then turning his attention back to the panelists, which are Tanya Blibberg and Tony Jones and the studio audience. And then we move to uh, Tanya Blibberg. Tanya Blibberg shows a non plus response, or where she is so confused that she doesn't know how to react. In the form of gaze and facial expression, see frame 9 below. She makes no other significant semiotic sign, but is clearly quite familiar with her political opponent's stratagems. Uh, we need to remember that the camera here is deployed as a semiotic resource. Uh, it sets up a dialogic context between Tony Abbott and Tanya Pilsberg, even though the one who asked the question is Tony Jones. Tony Abbott used gestures when he raised his hand and facing uh, outwards and speech rhythm or intonation when he say yes it is to emphasize lexical items. His gesture and speech rhythm raise the textual status of both of the individual words themselves and the overall point and thereby creating a form of graduation and emphasis. The use of gesture and accent together provide a more delicate range of textual gradients, organizing the flow of information into varying degrees of permanence. Please pay attention to the how Tony Abbott responds to Tony Jones' utterance. At this critical point, he refers his utterance to the whole discourse of the previous federal election in, in Australia when his liberal government of 11 years was only divided by an opposition which referred themselves as being fresh and clever by contrast with the tired old incumbent government he does this primarily through rhythm or intonation up to the point where he says tired old government leaks he set up a distinct temporal patterning of actions 
which is then disturbed by the point between clever and intelligent in new smart clever intelligent government aren't supposed to leak. About this place ironically here on this recent electionary discourse as a visual signal of playing it straight. There are many other opportunities to demonstrate how multimodal resorts function intersematically to achieve the agenda of the involved parties, including the producers who use camera shots to create a dialogue between the participants. For example, while Tony Jones engaged Tanya Pilbers in a critical dialogue about a government environmental policy initiative, the camera view changed to include Bob Brown, who is a leader of the Australian Green Party. He is seen to raise his eyebrows, nod his head, lick his lips, and shake his head from side to side. This gesture is afforded by choice of camera shots, which entirely recontextualize the dialogue with, uh, in which uh, Bob Brown doesn't take part in, and make it seem like he is uh, taking part in the discussion while well, actually he is not. The discussion above emphasized that context is an essential part of any analysis. Not just the immediate context of situation, but also the context of culture in general. Including in this case, the intertextual reverence which are made to the recent election in Australia and its discourse and to Australian democratic culture in general. The study above concludes that multimodal discourse analysis reveals how instances of multimodal semiotic choice function intersemiotically in ways which ultimately create and answer the larger part the larger pattern of social context and culture. The other examples of multimodal discourse analysis. There are two important points about it. The first one is the social relationship between an image and its viewer is strongly influenced by whether the subject in the image has the pleased eye contact with the viewer or not. Each of possibilities could be seen as an example of mood when the eye contact could suggest a demand, whereas no eye contact may suggest an offer. The second one is the point of view or perspective of the image is also relevant. For instance, a horizontal image suggests involvement as the viewer is on the same level as the subject of the image. A high angle shot might suggest superiority and low angle shot may suggest respect. This is a picture of Michelle Obama in a magazine. She looks straight at the camera as the precious eye contact with the viewer. Her face occupies the whole pages providing closeness. The shot is horizontal, suggesting the reader is on the same level as the subject of the image. The layout and the placement of the image is also significant in that they each convey a certain information values well as communicate salience of the message of the reader. The image of this example is centrally placed on the page so as to be most eye-catching. Occupies the whole page, it means that it is dominating the magazine in a way gives weight to the image. Centrally framed with the text means that it is showing how they belong together. Genre, speech act, and multimodality. Van Leeuwen discusses the relationship between speech act and genre in relation to multimodality using these two notions to capture the how versus the what of multimodal communication. A key point through from speech act theory is both elocutionary and prolocutionary act. An advertisement may aim to persuade a person to buy a particular product, it called as the elocutionary act. If the person is convinced by the advertisement and buys the product, this is the effect of the advertisement or prolocutionary act. New Directions in Multimodal Discourse Analysis The major challenge to multimodal discourse analysis 
is managing the detail and complexity involved in annotating, analyzing, searching, and retrieving multimodal semantics patterns within and across complex multimodal phenomena. The analyst, therefore, must take into account the intersemiotic and resemioticization processes across disparate time scales and spatial locations. In addition, different media may require different theoretical approaches. For example, video and film analysis may draw upon insight from film studies. Multimodal discourse analysis of websites and hypermedia give rise to added difficulties as semiotic choices combined with hypermedia analysis of links and other navigational resources, resulting in hypermodal analysis. One method for managing the complexity involves the development of interactive digital media platforms specifically designed for multimodal discourse analysis. Furthermore, the development of software as a meta-semiotic tool for multimodal analysis becomes itself a site for theorizing about and developing multimodal discourse analysis itself. Multimodal annotation tools currently exist, while further work is underway to develop interactive software for multimodal discourse analysis, which goes beyond annotation to include visualization and mathematical techniques for analysis. Therefore, if we would like to achieve the larger goals of understanding patterns and trends in technologies, text, context, and culture, the path forward must necessarily involve interdisciplinary collaboration. The limitation of MDA. The first one is the amount of time it takes to do this kind of analysis. The analysis at some stages can be quite technical, it can also be very interpretative. Multimodal analysis less often looks at the reader or viewers reading text, less attention is given to the aspect of language, and then the issue of how the analysis can be linked to wider social issues.